Hello YouTube, the Geeky Minecrafter here bringing you another video, episode 20 in our Let's Play series. Today is a world tour and we're going to lay out a sky spawner uh, that I've found online and, and thanks to the guys that have put that out there, I'll put their names and credits down below. Um, behind me you'll see <laughs> a failed attempt at an obsidian generator. I want a gold XP farm and for that, you're going to need a truckload of obsidian. So the premise behind this is there's water flowing, and then you place your uh, redstone right underneath it. Each one of these contains lava. You press the switch, which uh, is right here. The lava jumps out, hits the redstone, becomes obsidian. Well, apparently Mahjong has fixed that, quote, bug, uh, so the obsidian generator no longer works. So over here you'll see my next attempt, uh, again, you know, this, there's no way to create a, an infinite lava flow, sadly. Um, so there is a way to uh, create obsidian, but, oh, it's painstaking, and you're going to need a bunch of lava buckets. So basically the premise is this, you put a, a lava bucket here, let me get in there, here, here, and here. You knock this out, the water flows in, it creates cobblestone on one side, obsidian on the other, and you mine this out. Now, that's all well and fine, but that is, that is just a lot of lava buckets, which means this is probably would be better someplace where you had a... Um, an unlimited supply of lava, you know, in down in your mind somewhere where you've got a big old lava pool. Now they're not infinite. You get enough buckets in there, you're gonna empty it. Um, and so one of the things uh, I, I wanted to talk about today, and I tell you what, let's get out of the noisy area here. Let me go ahead and get some beef. Sorry, you know I'm hardwired. I can't uh, can't do this and or can't walk by and not do this. Won't take but a second. Of course, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm I'm actually seriously contemplating deleting this world and starting another. Um, I, I'm having some challenges. The challenges I think are in large part due to the fact that uh, I was a beginner when I began this, obviously, and uh, I've learned a bunch of things since then. One of those things is that certain elements that you put in your world really need to be a certain number of blocks away from other elements. Uh, if they're not, they can cause lag or they can really strain your computer. Now, I have a pretty beefy computer. I'm a computer programmer, so I keep you know, a pretty substantial computer. I think I've got 16 gig of uh, RAM on my uh, laptop and a terabyte hard drive. I've got, you know, the fastest processor you could buy a year ago. So, you know, I, I, it's a pretty beefy computer for a laptop, but it's still, it's struggling. So I think it may be time to, although we've got a lot of work in this world, it may be time to consider uh, moving on. So, uh, looks like I've had an Enderman here. Those little guys. Okay, so this is um, uh, the base of a friend of mine. I have uh, opened up Geeky Minecrafter, put it on the server, made it a multiplayer world so that we could play together, he and I. Um, and before you ask, um, it's really just just he and I. I were doing some experiments. I, I'm not really interested in in the nightmare that is opening up a, a server to the general public. So be, just don't ask, <laughs> okay? I I told you this was going to be a world tour, so I'm I'm bringing you down to show you what we began. Uh, this is his base, and it was a mountain over here and a mountain over here, and in the middle it was just like this hollowed out crater. It looked like a meteor had struck here. So when he when he got into the world, he came right to the edge of the mountain, right here, right here. So everything from here over was, you know, hollow. And he created himself a little house, and then we began uh, flooring it over there to the other mountain. 
Remember I told you it was like a crater hit it. So this was the other side. Um, there's uh, a bit of the mountain right over here. And then, of course, I, I just showed you this one here. So we floored it all. We went down a couple, three layers. Uh, that's one of the things I do like about a multiplayer world. You know, you can enlist the aid of your buddy. Uh, so we came in and we made another level. This is uh, uh, a level where we found it was going to be really good to bring in, you know, like mine carts. Uh, so we've got, you know, a pretty nice opening over there. Uh, I put a room in his base over here so I could sleep and, you know, while we worked. And then down here was going to be his sorting room. Okay, so we, we got everything hollowed out. We got all the walls filled in. We got a bunch of materials down here. And then uh, realized that, you know, we were just really struggling with two people on the server. So decided that I, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 certain I'm going to abandon this world in favor of another. Uh, now I won't uh, I won't make you sit through <laughs> all of the initial stuff, you know, building the initial hobbit hole or or uh, setting up my resources, building a another chicken cooker, you know, these things that you've already seen, I'll go ahead and do off camera uh, rather than make you sit through them again. But I am pretty sure that I'm done. Just you know, learned a lot of lessons and, and take a lesson. As I build the new stuff, I will be telling you, you know, how many blocks away, for example, the Iron Golem farm has to be from the village. Okay, it has to be at least 100 blocks in any direction to the nearest building inside a village. And if you don't do that, you're going to have problems. So I didn't know that, you know, in the beginning. So like I said, I'm, I'm learning as I go. Uh, see, I'm, I'm, I've put everything too close together. There's my automated wheat farm. Well, I say automated. It auto-harvests, I should say. Now, I'm really sad because I spent a lot of time building out that XP farm over there. And listen, that sucker fish grinds XP. Um, I can go in there and spend, you know, uh, just a little bit of time with a splash potion and some AFK and jump up 80 90 levels pretty pretty fast so you know it's it's disappointing i'm gonna have to build that again and then this is the farmhouse that i built for myself again off camera i did want to show you around so this is the master suite the sitting area The media room, the, oops, the attic, and my intention was to bring a bunch of, uh, you know, storage up here. Looks like it's getting ready to get dark. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this was <laughs> this was my my house, and originally this floor went all the way across over to there. This was all going to be one attic, and what happened was when I was Working on the fireplace, I knocked a, uh, a brick out, and I replaced it, but I replaced it with a piece of this wood, and it caught fire, and I'm down below, <laughs> I'm working down below, and I'm hearing this fire, and I'm thinking it's the fireplace, and pretty soon I look up, and the roof is on fire, and by the time I, you know, got downstairs, got on a uh, uh, chest, and found a water bucket, and got back up there, and put it out, uh, fully a quarter of the roof had burned. So when I started putting it back, I realized, you know, this looks kind of nice. I'm just going to leave it like this. So again, I'm, I'm not entirely happy to be leaving all that I've built in this world, but, you know, it's been a learning experience, and we are, by nature, explorers, all of us Minecrafters, uh, adventurers, if you will. So I feel like a new world uh, isn't going to be that big a deal. Um, I, I'm actually kind of looking forward to, you know, doing it differently, doing, you know, taking what I've, what I know and what I've learned and applying it to the new world. So I thought I'd give you one last tour of what I had accomplished here in this world. Uh, and although it's dark, one thing I did do on the other side uh, of this hill and over a ways where my original spawn point was, 
uh, and I think you can see these, uh, let's see, can you see? You see these trail of torches headed over there. What I did was I went over there because I was inviting a friend into the world. I built him a cabin, a bed, gave him some tools, lit it up with torches so that when he spawned in the first time, he would just be able to uh, grab some tools and uh, some food and whatever else he needed out of the cabin and then head on over here. That worked out really well. Again, I've given a lot of thought to this world and, and what I've built, and if it weren't so so challenging, uh, I, I would probably consider staying in here. But I am having a lot of challenge that are directly result of you know, putting things too close together, not going up high enough or low enough with some of the things that I'm building. Um, so, let's see. I did, you remember the tree farm. Now, I did discover uh, I can also grow birch. Now, you can't do the birch right together like you can the oak, uh, but I've got birch and spruce and oak in here. Uh, and it's, you know, it's producing quite a bit of wood for me. Uh, all the building projects that I have need a lot of wood, and my tree farm was making that work. So, again, I've, I'm going to lose a lot of resources that I've spent time putting together, but I think it'll be okay. Let's head on back to the house. Oh, yeah, got a few mobs out here. Let's just hope I don't lag in the middle of this. Oh, creeper. Ouch. Okay, I can outrun them now. <laughs> Let's just get over here and head on in. Let's see, what else did we do that, that I haven't shown you? Um, my minecart elevator is working really well. I did some expansions up here in the bedroom. Do you remember? Did I show you this? Uh, the sitting room. Boy, I've really done a lot of things. I've finally got my blaze rod, got my brewing stand happening, was starting to make splash potions for the um, XP farm over there. I mean... I'm all set up. I'm, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. But that's it. I, I think, um, you know, we'll just, we'll just replicate all of this. We'll get started again. So the next time you see me, I'll be in the new world, and uh, we'll get started there. Again, I'm not going to make you sit through the basics again, uh, but I will bring you in when I start building a XP farm or the sky spawner I have planned. As a matter of fact, uh, let me tell you briefly about that. Um, so I, I on, found it online, in, on YouTube, of course. you got to love YouTube. And basically, it's a giant box that houses mobs, or, you know, gives them a place to spawn. And uh, you've got dispensers along the back wall. So when it's, you know, when they spawn in, uh, you turn the switch, or in my case, I, I'm considering a clock. So a clock that goes off every, say, three minutes. So after three minutes of being able to spawn... Oh, this was not a good plan. The, there's going to be a zombie noise in here. So after uh, three minutes, everybody spawns. The dispensers click on. It washes the mobs out a hole between the two... Uh, the two buildings, the, the two halves of the hole, and it drops them onto a splat pad. Now, I've been working on that design in my uh, redstone world, in my, in my test world. I've made a few improvements. Uh, one of the things that I decided was uh, to go up a little bit higher to make my splat pad a little bit lower. Nom, 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 nom. Sorry, had to eat make it a little bit lower so that Endermen won't survive. Now, that would, should yield me some Ender Pearls. And since I'm, uh, I've played around with a couple of designs, I've decided my splat pad is going to, it's going to be, you know, as wide as it needs to be, which is, I think, eight. It's going to go down. Oops, sorry. Let's do that. It's going to drop down a level and then keep going, and then drop down another level and keep going. And I'm going to have dispensers on this end, so that, again, on a timer, 
the water begins flowing and it washes all of the goodies down to me and at this end down here I'll put up a lava blade because while the water's flowing if any mobs drop they'll survive so I need to be able to move those out uh, and I don't want to you know have to go out there and kill them so by putting a lava blade you know four four deep and then having this area be where the hopper chain you know eight wide hoppers are that collect the deals the water will flow down and end right here the lava blade will begin here and end right here and right underneath all the drops will fall in there and uh, I'll have you know I'll have all the mob drops uh, arrows bones uh, witches ender pearls uh, everything witches drop so I've done some playing with it it's gonna be pretty good as a matter of fact you know what let me show you hold on a sec here we are okay so actually right now I'm inside my collection area so this area right up here is the lava blade I was telling you about these are the drops that I'm getting I do have a maintenance area that heads over there to the other uh, side and uh, while I was building and putting up my clock and timer I, I just needed to be over here so let me show you a bird's eye view up here uh, gosh what mode am I in hopefully I'm in peaceful right now I don't necessarily want to be let's see oh I'm, I'm in creative good okay oh so we have a witch burning up so I'm not in peaceful so basically this clock controls these dispensers and on a timer the water will flow and wash any of the drops down and as you can see right down here I have uh, that channel I was telling you about and the lava blade so it looks like she's managed to jump up here she's trying to survive it uh, she's taking potions I don't know how many she has let's go ahead and see if we can't just encourage her to die come on die okay you see the uh, water began or stopped flowing now let's head up here this is my mechanical room for the other side there's my piston clock and um, timer for the the redstone torches that head up okay and then this is the actual spawner now in this case it's only one tall let me let me jump up in here and show you what we have uh, do I have a torch I do okay so we have a series of dispensers along the back wall and I have it cut out where the water will end and so again on that timer it gives the mobs a chance to spawn in here and then at the timed sequence the water flows it washes the mobs out they fall onto this splat pad <laughs> which by the way I get squids in when the water's flowing which is you know it's a bonus I get uh, I get black ink or ink sacks so there we go the water has fired it stays on long enough to wash everybody to the edge everybody that spawns will fall right down here and uh, if the fall doesn't kill them the water will come on and wash them into the lava and the lava will get them so let me let me park myself right over here uh, this is meant to be AFK so I need to be a certain you know number of blocks away I haven't built my AFK station that's a bit close uh, that's not really where it's going to be ultimately so I'm going to pause the video and come back when we start getting dropped okay as it happens <laughs> the water was flowing when they fell which is exactly what I was uh, telling you was one of my concerns so as you can see this lava blade does a really good job of taking them out and I don't lose any of the drops I've done quite a few tests and what winds up happening is there's a channel right under these signs so the creature gets stuck right here between those signs and the drops fit, fit into that channel it's really great oh here comes some more or because I'm under it they'll they sometimes just leap to their death now this I don't know I may have to do something different with spiders uh, spiders can clog up the system so here comes our water up oh, see my timing is off a bit so what I may do is stop the clock for a second let's do this Okay, so stopping the clock. 
We'll just wait here a second and see that would normally light it up and I don't want it yet. What I want to do is wait until they begin dropping and then start the clock again. So I've I fiddled and, and you know messed around with this for gosh, several hours. Uh, even though I'm in creative mode and it's easier to build when you're flying, it's still problematic to work out the systems, the mechanical rooms, the timing, and, and stuff like that. So I want to build myself a good... Oh, there we go. Okay, looks like we had... There we go. Should get some water. Wash the last of them down. The water should stop about now. There we go. Okay, now we got a clear field for the next one that falls. Now, one of the things that I do want to do, and I, I, again, I haven't done it yet, is right now this is only one layer. And I, I feel like if I stack them, you know, three or four tall, I'll get many more drops. Now, I'm, I'm happy with the drops I'm getting. Don't get me wrong. There's a number of drops that are coming down, and I've got all kinds of resources out here. Um, I've got gunpowder for TNT because there are just a bunch of <laughs> it is noisy when they fall uh, I've got a bunch of uh, bones for bone meals spider string for you know bows and dispensers and stuff like that look at all the arrows that are coming in and again the ink is a is a you know a happy byproduct so this is the quick tour of the Sky Spawner, and again, I'll put the links to the original tutorial uh, down in the description below. Again, I, I've done some things to make it my own. Um, I, I don't think anybody will, <laughs> you know, be upset. Uh, this this particular path right here, again, I worked on a number of different killing pits, if you will. Uh, I tried air blocks and crushing them. I tried dropping them down uh, and dealing with them at the bottom. Uh, I tried, you know, just a straight water trough uh, so I could uh, get some XP out of it. And what I found is, you know, all things being equal, uh, I can I can build an XP grinder somewhere else. This is really just meant to give me all the resources that I need. Uh, and by putting it low enough down. And I, I think it's, uh, let's see, Enderman take a fall damage. Uh, at 44, they'll die. So 44 and above, they'll die. So I, I want to place this pad, the top of this pad, 44 below the lowest level so that uh, Enderman, that if, if they do spawn up in there, will, will die if they get pushed out. I see there they all go. And it just, you know what, I almost need to increase the timing on this. I feel like, you know, it just almost isn't long enough. Now, one of the other improvements that they considered is making, or covering the floor with either packed ice or ice so that when this water begins flowing, it flows them really fast. Uh, the theory being, you know, nobody will have time to jump or whatever. And then I don't have to worry about my timing quite so much. So uh, I think before I build it, my my real world I am gonna try multiple levels uh, I am right now happy with my splat pad oh, what's happening here oh interesting do I have a huh I had a little glitch I've got a I've got a see-through spider here I'm not really sure how that happened <laughs> Did you know you could have an invisible spider? I didn't either. Oh, I'm sorry, I just like wailing on them. Okay, so that concludes the tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, stay tuned. The next time you see me, I'm going to be in a brand new world. Uh, I will build all the, you know, the initial stuff that I need to survive. Be do that off camera. Um, or if you, you know, if you want to see it all over again just let me know <laughs> but it but leave a comment down below and I'll I'll check in I'll show you you know I'll, I'll show you all of it if you want uh, so I am uh, I'm gonna sign out now let's see look at that it's raining mobs I love it uh, now occasionally they survive especially if they have armor but again the water flows and kills anybody who remains so 
overall, I'd say I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please take a moment to hit that like button. If you want to see more like this, hit that subscribe button or check back often. This is the Geeky Minecrafter signing out. Happy mining! Thank <laughs> you.